New name, 100 years of being a club. We took on a new tagline, which is opportunity changes everything. So the first question I'm going to pose to the both of you is what does opportunity mean to you? Um, I think opportunity describes pretty much my entire experience with the club um, from the time that I was young, uh, just being you know, offered these opportunities and being able to sort of trace my journey to where I am today by looking at, you know, the opportunities that the club presented to me at, at any one time, um, specifically in public speaking uh, and just being able to, you know, speak as an MC at Blueprint or um, speak at, I think like PepsiCo golf tournament to a bunch of people um, and just those little steps along the road that have all led to me being, you know, here doing what I love to do at like a national level now, which mm -hmm. is awesome. So opportunity to me at the, um, at the club, um, well, first opportunity for Sydney meant for me that it gave her the ability to compete um, in, you know, in the real world, um, compete with her peers, um, not, not necessarily in a negative way, but she has the chance to compete with people who maybe have had better opportunities, whether it be through their parents, you know, and, and their um, jobs or, you know, mm -hmm. um, through some sort of networking or connections. So I think the club gave her that, um, that opportunity, opportunity to do that. For me, um, it gave me the chance to learn more about my community. I've lived in Toronto since probably for it was at least 10 years and I had no clue about most of, of Toronto because I never really stayed in Toronto. I'd go back home to Burlington or whatever and I didn't do a lot in Toronto and I didn't do a lot, especially in the community. So um, I wasn't aware of what challenges there are in the community, only basically what you see on TV and you know, don't go to certain parts of town, but you don't realize um, what the people who the people are, what they're like, and you know what challenges they're facing. So that gave me an opportunity to learn more about my community. Start like yeah. three steps behind everybody, depending on yeah. you know, whether it's like the color of your skin or your socioeconomic yeah. status. And just no, see exactly. that catch up is is really big. Yeah. Two with and I and I know you've probably heard me say this story like a million times, but when Sydney started going to the club and, you know, she comes home, like she's not eating dinner. I'm like, Sydney, why are you eating your dinner? Like I actually went and said, Marnie, can you stop feeding my child because she's not eating her dinner? And Marnie's like, well, this is like, all we give all kids meal because sometimes this is the one meal a kid has for the day. And I, like that hit me because I never even thought about, thought about it. other kids not having, you know, especially not having food because I, I didn't grow up in an environment like that, just like you. I grew up yeah. in a household with two parents. They both worked, you know, we lived in Burlington. They both had good jobs and, you know, so I never experienced um, a hungry child basically or yeah. um, a situation where, you know, um, a child was going without. We never yeah. went without. I didn't know what that was like. And I never, yeah. and Sydney never went without and I didn't, you know, so. Um, so, you know, my next question is, and you've kind of touched on it a little bit, um, Sydney specifically, I was hoping you could talk about your time with the club. So how long, you know, you were with us, even though you are still very much with us now, um, I think you've kind of come in from my understanding and I haven't known you very long is you've come in through a lot of different facets of your life. Um, and I know that, you know, everybody loves to talk about you because you're, you're a shining example <laughs> of, of what they hope every, you know, kid can experience, you know, within, within our walls. Absolutely. Um, so I've been with the club now for, I think this is my 11th year uh, with the club. Uh, I started when I was nine. Um, like my mom said, you know, the first day I went in and I didn't want to leave. <laughs> uh, I think I, my mom came at like five to pick me up. She's like, where's my daughter? I was like, no, you need to come back at six. Uh, <laughs> Seven actually. <laughs> Seven. There the very last moment I could. Um, just because I loved it so much. So yeah, um, being with the club for 11 years sort of means uh, being there for a lot of different times and transition periods in my life. So, you know, saw me through that last couple of years of, uh, 
you know, grade school and then graduating, going to high school sort of across town, but uh, still being there to uh, support me, especially with like my social justice issues, because that's around the time where I sort of found my passion in public speaking and mm -hmm. social justice and, you know, giving me opportunities to uh, work with people and make change and getting me in those rooms with the people that could make the changes that we wanted to see. Um, and that was huge for me. And then going now into university, I'm in my second year at Mac and supporting me with, you know, financially and um, with just reference letters and being able to send an email to Marty like the night before something is due and being like, hi, I need a reference letter. Can you just send me one quickly? And for being like, yes, of course, I'll send you one, even though it's very last minute. <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, just knowing that, you know, someone's always in my corner um, when I need it. And, um, and that support has just never wavered the, um, the decade plus that I've, that I've been here and through yeah. all the different points mm -hmm. times in my life. Uh, and I was just there with what I need in the moment. Uh, yeah, just going from like, I got my first, my Dominique Robinson gave my very first job at 16. Um, and then, you know, branching out into the world and kind of, yeah, all that sort of thing. But yeah. That's a, I love it. Um, and maybe Juliet, I'm sure you could also speak to this a little bit, but why did you join the club? My neighbor and I, we had our kids in another um, um, club, mm -hmm. another institution, and we didn't feel that it was meeting our needs. Um, so we actually started looking around and it was during Cabbage Town Festival and we saw there was a table, I think it was like Tim maybe sitting at the table. And we thought, oh, these are pretty cool. So that that following um, when this was when they, the first day they started, we took a walk over there, checked it out and thought, okay, everybody seems so nice. Marnie, Dominique, everybody seemed like wonderful. And we're like, oh, what, what a difference. So we took mm -hmm. the, the kids there and, and they absolutely loved it. It was a, like a total different sort of atmosphere. Um, the staff um, were very much more professional um, and they kept the children engaged, which was great. And like Sydney said, you know, the first day we went to pick them up, they're like, oh, can you come back later? And we're like, okay, what time do you close? They said, we close at seven. So we went down the street, had a coffee and then went back and, you know, they still didn't even want to leave when the club was closing. So we knew then, you know, this is the place, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So this question um, is going to be more of like, I'm going to give you a statement and then you're going to give me the word that comes to your mind the quickest or the one that I like the best. You have some good editing. Thank you. <laughs> Being a part of the BGC Toronto Kiwanis community makes me feel blank. Proud. Supported. So knowing that we're in our 100th year of operation, we're merging with the Cabbage Town Youth Center. We've taken on a new name. Expansion is happening. What are your hopes for the future of the club? I hope the club continues to grow and expand and continue to make such a good um, positive difference in the community and to the kids that go there. Um, yeah, I think, I think they're doing a great job and I want them to be able to continue it and sort of spread it in the downtown area. So any opportunity they have to grow, I think um, is great. And you know, I wish the club all the luck in the world. I agree. I just, you know, want to see more kids, more staff, uh, more volunteers get the same opportunities to be part of this club community um, that, you know, I have in all of those different roles. So uh, yeah, any opportunity to expand and branch out and, and provide those opportunities in the community, I think is a great help. Um, I think, you know, kind of one of the reasons we really wanted you guys to start it off was you, the two of you really incorporate every audience that we've ever had, like from a <laughs> member to a part-time <laughs> staff, to a parent, yeah. to, you know, now you're an alumni and a board, board member and committee member. Like, I think ex, ex, guys, ex executive board. Yes. Yeah. The roles that the two of you took 
and you know continually coming back to the club to support really spoke to the impact that we that we had as an organization on you guys and mm -hmm. you know I hope that you know in the next 100 years we get so many you know parents and members who are like the two of you who want to give back and want to keep you know coming back and see the the benefit and being a part of our organization um but you know Julia this question is definitely more for you you know why um why did you feel like being a part of the board and being a part of the committee was something you wanted to do Um, I think because I saw that the way they were supporting Sydney mm -hmm. and um, they always, to me, made her feel very important, very, um, and they did it with all the other kids too, I, I noticed. Um, but I think it's the way they treated Sydney and the way they treated the other kids that went there. And because of, you know, I told you about the, the I, I never knew kids went without like that. Um, I wanted to be part of, of sort of supporting the, the kids, not just my own, but making sure that as a parent, I'm not holding the club accountable, but just making sure that, you know, that sort of continued support is always there and always, and it has always been. And it's, you know, that all kids are treated equally and, you know, uh, from the way that they, they supported the children. And I, and I mean, like everybody knows, like, I don't love a bunch of kids around me. Everybody knows that, but I love that the club supports the kids and I love how they support the kids, the kids. At yeah. the club. And, and, you know, how there's always room. One of the things that I liked was, you know, a lot of places, you know, if a, a child misbehaves or acts up, I love the way that they will, you know, take the kid to the side and talk to the child and let them know and then say, hey, you know what, you're going to take a day off from here tomorrow, take a day off tomorrow, but you're going to come back and you're going to feel better and you're going to have a great day and blah, blah, blah. And then they also followed up with the parent and let the parent know that something had happened and this is what they said to the child and this is how the child was feeling like. It wasn't just, you know, your son had a bad day. This is what happened here. He's not coming back tomorrow. It was more of a there was a process and it yeah. made the kid feel good. It didn't, the kid didn't feel like he was going to be in trouble with his parent because, you know, yeah. most parents are going to go, what did you do? But the process was there and it, it made the parent and the child um, feel comfortable. Like it didn't mm -hmm. make them feel like, oh shoot, you know, my kid's acting up. It's put, it was, I, I really enjoyed, not enjoyed. I really liked the way they did that. And I felt mm -hmm. that it didn't make the child feel bad or the parent feel bad. So okay. you, know, you, you talked about how oh, I, yeah. you saw, you know, how we supported our kids and our members yeah. and how that kind of made you want to give back and give back in a role where you could be part of that change. Yeah. Um, so I guess, Sydney, the question I'll ask you is, you know, your mom talks about seeing it firsthand. Do you remember experiencing that, you know, that feeling that she's talking about? Sure. And I think it's one of the reasons that I wanted to stay involved with the club also and become like, you know, the LIT or the CIT or the staff, because I wanted to give, you know, the kids coming in the same experiences that I got uh, growing up at the club. Um, and it's true. It, they made you feel important and supported. Every situation was dealt with care. You felt like you were always dealing with a caring adult. Um, and as a child, sometimes when things happen, like your first thought is, oh my gosh, I'm going to get in trouble for this. And it's not even like, how do I remedy this situation? How do I apologize to the person I hurt? Um, mm -hmm. Or, you know, whatever the case may be. And it's always like the first thought is like, oh my God, I'm going to get in trouble or, you know, I'm going to get kicked out or all of these things and not really the things that you should be thinking about as a kid and um, how to deal with conflict. So just learning to have these conversations and not, you know, use violence or, or other means to get your feelings across and learning how to deal with those things help, um, healthily and uh, in a way that would, you know, benefit all parties and that, you know, everyone could move on. So I think when I was a staff, I was like, okay, you know, when I was a kid in this position, you know, in summer camp or in after school program and something like this happened, what would I want? you know, that staff to say to me or what, what right. I needed in this situation. And I think that's something that I took with me and what makes me 
good at working with kids now is because I had those experiences and I had, and I learned to talk to people and deal with conflict in a way that was beneficial. Uh, and, you know, we could move on from in a good way. Yeah. If you could pick one thing for people to know about the club, what would it be? What I would like them to know about the club is that the club is there. It's there and it's, it's here to help, it's here to support, um, and it's here to make the community better. And it does, yeah. you know. Um, I would say I'd like them to know that it's, it's a good place to grow. Um, you know, through every stage of your life, there's always something or some program or uh, someone there to support you um, and give you exactly what you need. Uh, I think I'd also like them to know that putting your kids in a place with, you know, kids from a million different cultural backgrounds and uh, speak different ways or look different from them or have different family situations, it's never going to hinder their childhood. It's always gonna be a beneficial thing and it's always gonna be something that helps them later in life. Um, and uh, yeah, I think growing up around all different types of people was a huge part of what made me, you know, mm -hmm. like who I am and uh, yeah. the things that I know and the, the people that I've gotten to work with and, you know, compassion and pride and all of those yeah. things and being able to develop those with people who don't look like you. And that's what happens at the club. Nobody is treated differently. So. I have one final question. It's kind of a two-parter. Um, the first part is, if you could thank anybody from the club, who would you thank? And if you can identify a specific, you know, memory or, you know, part of your relationship with this person that, you know, is the reason you hold them so close to your heart. Uh, so Leslie, Marnie, Dominique, Ian. Okay. Yeah, I'm probably going to add somebody else in there, but uh, I won't. <laughs> but yeah, those are the people to me that are the staple of the club. Um, that have been there from from beginning to end um, with Sydney. I know Ian has moved on to uh, bigger and better things, um, kind of maybe not better, but, um, but I know that um, he still supports Sydney, even though he's not at the club. Um, Marnie will always, I know, be supportive. Same with Leslie and again, Dominique, even though she's not at the club, I know she's always supportive of Sydney and I hold, I honestly like, I, I, you know, I could cry now, like I hold them really dear to my heart. I, well, he made me cry. I do really hold them close to my heart. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a tough one for me too. Uh, I think they're probably the same people. Uh, Dom, you know, Dominique gave me my first job. I remember every summer until I was 16, she would come to me and be like, Sydney, are you, are you 16 yet? Can you work yeah. here? Like every <laughs> single summer without film, like Dom, no, I was just 13 last summer. Do <laughs> <laughs> some math here. Um, uh, but yeah, every single year. Uh, and uh, even, you know, the first summer that I worked, if I was having any issues, I knew I could always go to her. I'm pretty sure I cried in her office a couple of times. Um, <laughs> Definitely Marnie without fail has always been there for me. Um, just if it's a text or any time, I'm like, hey, I'd like to run this program. What do you think? She'd be like, sure, I guess. <laughs> it's like a program plan, I guess. Yeah. Uh, or just like any just like any single thing I could possibly need. Um, beyond even beyond club stuff, just like sometimes she'll just call me and be like, hey, how you doing? Where are you at? Like, <laughs> that's yeah. that. Yeah, and then she'll, you know, she always acts like she doesn't like you, but, you know, she asks yeah, she does. <laughs> means she loves you when she says that. That's what it Yeah, means. I think it means yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's the exact opposite, actually. Yeah. But, but yeah, and I think also a big thing for me was that, you know, these are two, like, very strong, very independent women, and that's not something that I that you always get to see growing up is you you know who runs the place <laughs> yeah. and you get that sense and you you see them you know like putting in the work every day and um and connecting with people the way they do uh and I and it, that was that was huge for me having people that you know looked like me and had the same ideas as me 
being mm -hmm. the ones who were able to, you know, support me every day or provide me opportunities. And, and even if there weren't opportunities present, they would, you know, build them. They would <laughs> make them out of thin air for you if they needed to. Uh, but yeah, that was always huge for me growing up. You know, you guys have a very good story and you have a very good understanding of, of the reality of the work because you've both kind of worked for us in very different ways. Um, and, you know, sometimes people go, oh, it's, it's after school care. It's like just a bunch no, of it's not. arts and, and crafts yeah. and that's it. And it's, it's so you know, much it's so much. Yeah, and that's unfortunately just, how a lot of parents treat it like it's a babysitting service and it's not because they're actually shaping the lives of your yeah. kids, right? They're Absolutely. the ones that are, are, you know, being that sort of disciplinary to your kids if they need it. They're the ones that are like being, giving them that hug if they've had a bad after day at school. And, you know, this is the first, they're the first person that, you know, these kids are seeing right after school. So their emotions are there. like, yeah, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that some people do treat it that way, but it's mm -hmm. really not. And people need to realize that that's not, they're not a babysitting ser service. Yeah. They're like, uh, they're a life shaping service, really. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's so true. Like, I don't, it is. It is. I, there's nothing like it that I can, that I can name. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty yeah. cool that we, you know, we've all gotten to be a part of something. Yeah so fun and something that I hope is around yeah. for another hundred years.